over here at Patuxent Nurseries on a gorgeous morning. Nice and cool, perfect fall weather for planting. We're here at Martha Ann's Memorial Garden, who's a co-worker of ours in the perennial department who passed away unexpectedly last year. So in honor, we created this wonderful native garden for her. This was an old pond area, which we converted, and it's a wet area. So our emphasis here was using native plants that specifically like a wet or moist area. And this gets mostly full sun with some shade, but at least four to six hours of direct sun. All of these do really well. Over here we have Coryopsis or tick seed. This is called Miss Kim's Sun Flare, which was developed here by our grower, Miss Kim. Great for sun, gets bushy, loves a wet area or dry, continuously blooms, and you don't really have to deadhead it. Then along in the back area here where it gets sun all afternoon, this is Panicum, which is a native grass. This particular variety is called Niagara Falls. Beautiful, three to four feet tall, nice, bright color. And of course, in front we have a bench here for her saying forever remembered, forever missed, and we will always miss her. But she was a garden gangster. She loved her flowers, loved her pollinators, and specifically the natives. So in the front we have a low-growing creeping phlox, which comes in pastel colors. It's also native, it's evergreen, so you keep some green in the winter. That variety, of course, is forever blue, and that usually blooms in May. Now directly in front of that are fall bloomers. These are asters, New England asters, and that particular variety is Bayou Blue. That should be blooming shortly with dark blue double flowers. And then along in the front are native sedges, which are a type of grass. They don't really bloom flowers. They have little seed heads, but they're good for filling out a low space. And of course, in the middle here, we have the black-eyed Susans. For those of you who are Marylanders here, this is our native flower. And that is the Rebecca fulgita. Beautiful colors long blooming. Now interspersed in the back, the tall spiky things is blue flag iris. Bluish flowers bloom usually mid to late spring. Great clump of plants that will spread in your wet garden. It's good for absorbing a lot of water. Then in between we have Baptisia australis with blue flowers. Another nice bushy midsummer bloomer. And then along here, we have, let's see, the Eupatorium blue mist flower, which is a cousin of the Joe Pye weed. This is beautiful because it's long blooming, doesn't get quite as tall as Joe Pye weed, and will spread nicely and loves wet feet. In front of it, we have another wet lover here, Amsonia blue ice. Again, gets nice, dense foliage blue flowers, long blooming in the summer. Great for your pollinators. And then over here in the back, this is another type of Amsonia, or threadleaf Amsonia, Amsonia hubrechtii. This is known for its beautiful golden fall color. You'll see it along the highways, areas like that where they want a little pop of color. So this was planted maybe three weeks ago and it's coming along nicely. Sometime next spring, we'll probably add a few more things. Maybe a little bit more color, a little pink Joe Pye weed, maybe some milkweed, the swamp milkweed. They love a wet area too. But all of this is native, it's beneficial, especially for your pollinators. You wanna bring your bigger butterflies, your hummingbirds, and of course your bees. Your bees love it. So I'm the crazy plant lady here and we're enjoying this gorgeous day and I hope you do too. Thank you. Uh, yay!